Hello, um, everyone. So you're welcome to this uh, lecture. We are going to um, start looking at um, this subtopics of linear combination and linear dependence and independence. Okay. Uh, so in the last few uh, lectures, we looked at uh, vector spaces and some examples of that. And then in the last um, couple of uh, videos, we uh, covered subspaces. Uh, and examples of subspaces. There was a theorem that was very important um, to be able to show that a given subset is a subspace. Um, okay, so uh, do the examples and um, the exercise as well to, um, to help your understanding. Okay, so uh, this lecture, we want to cover linear combination and then linear dependence and independence, okay? Uh, so let's get on to it. Um, what is a linear combination? You've probably come across this in linear algebra, right? Um, if you let v1, v2, vk be vectors in a vector space v, a vector v in, in, the, um, in the set v here is called a linear combination of these vectors if um, v is equal to uh, the sum of these quantities here, lambda 1, v1 plus lambda 2, v2, all the way to lambda k, um, vk, for some scalars, okay? So if I can find scalars such that um, the, the product of the scalars with these vectors um, and the sum of all of that, if this can be split into this or this can be written as that, then V is said to be a linear combination of these vectors. Okay, that is basically what that means. Uh, so here's uh, a simple example of that. Let um, in R3, let uh, V1, V2, V3 be... Um, uh, three vectors in R3. We want to show that uh, this guy here, the vector V, which is 2, 1, 5, is a linear combination of the three vectors V1, V2, 3. How do you do that? Well, <clears throat> how you do that is you go back and write this, right? The vector, our vector V can be written as a, a linear combination lambda 1, V1 plus lambda 2, V2 plus lambda 3, V3. Okay, we know what V1, V2, V3 are. So basically the point is, can we find the scalars, all right? Can we find the scalars lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, such that when we uh, combine them like this, we get, we get the vector V, okay? So you should try it. When you try it, you should get this. I would, I'll give you a, a, a hint about how you do that. I'll show you in review where it is. Um, so what you do is um, you write, you write your um, vectors out, and then you have a system of equations, and then you try to solve that for um, for, for your uh, distance. So I like to I like to do I like to um, write my vector v in a column form. Right, v here is two one five. Okay, this is equal to lambda one times uh, v one. Okay. Then I write my vector v1. Vector v1, hmm, v1 is here. This is one, two, one, plus lambda two times the vector v2. v2 is giving us what? Uh, one, zero, two, one, zero, two, plus lambda three, times the last one, which is I think one, one, zero, one, one, zero, right? One, one, zero. Okay, so when you do it like this, you, you get a system of three equations, right? You have lambda one plus lambda two plus lambda three. This is equal to two. Okay, we have two lambda one this is zero. This is lambda three. This is equal to one. Okay, that one. You have lambda one plus two lambda two. The other one is zero, this is equal to five. So you have this, and then you try to solve for lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three. If you get lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, what that means is that if you multiply lambda one by this, lambda two by this, and lambda three by this, your result should give you your vector V. If that happens, then you see that this vector here is a linear combination of the three vectors, okay? Okay, so do solve this if you if you do right. You know how to solve um, uh, 
perhaps simultaneous equations simultaneously. So if you do, you should get lambda one to be one, lambda two, two, lambda three to be minus uh, minus one. Okay. So that is it for um, that is it for linear linear combination. We'll look at um, uh, linear dependence and independence. What do we mean by saying that um, um, uh, vectors um, set of vectors are linearly dependent or linearly independent? These concepts are very important, uh, especially for um, I mean, if you if you take in a class on differential equations, you will notice that. Um, if, if two functions, for instance, vector functions are not linearly independent, then, then you are not guaranteed a unique solution of your uh, differential equation. So they play a critical role, okay? So it's important to know when vectors are linearly dependent and when they are uh, independent, okay? So here's a definition for linear dependence. The vectors V1, V2 up to Vk in a vector space, so these are in a vector space V, they are said to be linearly dependent if you can find scalars lambda one to lambda k, at least one of which is not zero. So this is important, okay? At least one of which is not zero, such that the linear combination, right, is equal to zero, okay? So if I, if I find a linear combination of the vectors and it's equal to zero, and yet um, not all the um, scalars are zero, all right? I can find some scalars that are not zero then I will say that the vectors are linearly dependent, all right? They depend on each other. So how you think about it, how I think about it is this, right? Um, if I have, let's, let's say all of them are zero and I have two of them that are not zero. Say lambda one is not zero. So I can have lambda one and V one and I have lambda two, which is not zero, let's say, and V two, uh, if this is equal to zero, because they are dependent, I can basically take to this to that side and I can write V1 to be equal to, if you like, negative lambda two over lambda one, V2, right? You see that V1 here depends on, because lambda one is not zero, I can divide through by lambda one. And you see that V1 depends on V2, right? The difference is in this, um, this uh, coefficient here. But, for them to be dependent, at least one of the scalars must not, must not be zero, okay? So that is when we say that the, um, the vectors are linearly dependent, okay? So that is linear independence. So basically you find a linear combination, equate it to zero and see whether you can find the scalars um, and uh, not all of them um, are zero, right? You have non-zero uh, scalars among them. On the other hand, for linear independence, um, if your linear combination, right, is equal to zero, then all the scalars must be zero. If that is the case, then the vectors are said to be linearly independent, okay? Linearly independent. So they don't depend on each other. So you can't you can do what I did here, okay? Because all the lambdas are, are zero, okay? So we'll do, uh, we'll look at two examples, right? Um, so you want to determine whether the given set of vectors are linearly dependent or linearly independent. So uh, the first one is the set S here with V1 given by this, V2 is this, the vector V3 is this. So we'll do that and then we'll, we'll look at this one. So the first thing you do is basically write down the linear combination for both of them, the linear combination equated to zero, and then you try to solve for the scalars. That is the approach, that is the plan, okay? So you take this first set and write down a linear combination. I'm calling my scalars C1, C2, C3. So this is a linear combination I equated to zero. C1, we know what V1 is, is given by this. We know V2, we know V3, this is zero. I can write this as a system of uh, three equations, all right? Two, three, and four. So these are my equations, okay? So I can basically solve this. Uh, to see what I get for C1, C2, and C3, okay? So when you solve it, I mean, there are various ways that you can do this, right? You can solve this. So what I'm doing here is take equation two minus equation four so that C3, C3 cancels out, this cancels out, this and this will give me three, three C2. And so that should be equal to zero, which means that C2 is zero. 
Well, if C2 is zero, then from here, C3 is also zero, right? This is zero, so C3 must be equal to zero. If C2 is zero, C3 is zero, then C1 is also equal to zero, okay? So I have just shown that C1, C2, C3, all the scalars are zero, okay? Therefore, the vectors are linearly independent, okay? Remember, for linear independence, you need all the scalars to be zero. So after solving the system of three equations, we have seen that uh, all the scalars are zero, okay? Therefore, the vectors are linearly independent, okay? So this is one way that you can show that they are linearly independent. The other way is instead of solving this directly, you could, um, you could write this as a matrix, right? You can write this as that. And use um, you know, row, row echelon uh, or row echelon uh, reductions, right? Uh, some people prefer to do that. You can, you can do that and then you should end up with the same the same solution, right? That C1, C2, C3 are, are zero. Okay, so you can do this. Good. Now the second, uh, the second one is is this. So you have V1 is this, V2, V3 is this. You do the same thing. Write a linear combination and equate it to zero, and try to determine your um, your um, scalars, your lambda ones or C ones, C twos and stuff. Okay, so here. So we multiply C1 by V1, C2, V2, C3 times V3 and equate it to zero, okay? We write this as a system of three equations. Again, I'm going to solve them directly. Um, so here, I'm going to eliminate C3. So I multiply this guy by three and I multiply this by 11 and that gives me this. I'm not touching this. I haven't touched six yet, okay? So I'm just going to deal with five and seven, okay? So when you do that, you're going to get these equations so I can eliminate uh, C3, okay? So I've subtract. When I subtract, I'm going to get this equation. But when you do, notice, when you do that, you notice that this equation that you get, equation 10 here, is actually the same as um, the equation that we haven't used yet. See, if you multiply through by negative, you have 16C1 plus 8C2. That is the equation we get when we, when we deal with the first two equations. You see? So that tells you that the coefficients are dependent. They depend on each other, right? So from here, you can divide through by 8, for instance, and you have 2C2 plus C2 is equal to 0. Therefore, C2 is negative 2C1, right? From here, you can get this. Okay? And when you go back to... Um, so you see that C2 depends on uh, C1. You can go back to equation five, for instance, and try to find C2, I mean C1 in terms of C2 and C3. You can do that, right? Um, uh, so from five, you're gonna have this. Five is, uh, I'm using five, that's this guy. Five, I can solve for actually C3 here because I know that C1 depends on C2, so I can put that here and solve for C3. So 11C3 is equal to this, minus 44C1 divided through by 11, plus C3 is equal to negative 4C1. So you see that C2 depends on C1, C3 also depends on C1, right? By some constants, all right? So we can just let, one of the ways you do it, you can just let C1 be some arbitrary constant K, okay? When you do, that means that your constant, your uh, scalar C1, C2, C3 can be written as this, right? C1 will just be okay. This is negative 2k, so you have that. Negative 4k, so you have that, right? Okay, so this tells you that, remember for linear independence, all of them are be zero, but we found that they are not all zero, right? They, are, they will all be zero only if k is zero, but k is an arbitrary constant, so we can choose any number, right? So the constants are not all zero, okay? So, um, the vectors are linearly dependent, okay? And you, you can usually see it from here or from there, right? You see that two equations are the same. So um, it means they depend on each other. So they are linearly dependent, okay? Uh, because not all the, um, the scalars here are equal to zero. Okay, and you can check. But remember, what this means is that I can find, um, I can find, C1, C2, C3, 
which are not all zero. And yet, when I multiply them by the vectors and add everything up, the result will be zero. That's what this means, okay? So we can check to see that that is correct, okay? So here we can, for instance, we can choose k is arbitrary. We can choose, we can choose k to be one. If you choose k to be one, your, your constants will just be these guys, right? If you choose k to be one, your c1, c2, c3 will just be this. And so you go back and multiply the vectors by them. So I multiply the vector v1 by one, I get that. The vector v2 I multiply by negative two, and then v3 I multiply by negative four, okay? So I'll just, I'll just show you the first, the first one will give you zero, right? <clears throat> this is 20, negative two times negative 12 will be a uh, positive 24, 24 plus 20 is 44. But negative four times 11 is negative 44. So you have 44 and negative 44, that gives you a zero. The second one, this is negative 16. This is negative two times negative eight is positive 16. So positive 16, negative 16, that's zero. This and this is zero, so you get a zero, okay? And then the third one should also give you a zero. So that shows that you can find, you can find scalars that are not all zero. And when you uh, find a linear combination of them with the vectors, you get a zero, showing that the vectors are linearly dependent. So what we've just done here is a check. Okay, this is not part of the solution. This is a check, but here's a, here's a solution. Okay, so that is all we'll, we'll discuss about linear dependence and linear independence. The next couple of lectures, we'll look at um, linear transformations and then look at the kernel or the null space of a vector space. Okay, so that will bring us to the end of this, uh, this lecture or this, uh, this video. Thank <laughs> you.